Take four, gender representation. How do you think about your gender on a daily basis? I love my gender, I wouldn't change it. My gender as a male, uh, a lot, because I'm a new father, so <laughs> yeah, daily. I'm, I'm in grad school for, I, I study gender, um, so I think about it a lot and probably more than like the average person does, but um, for me, I see it everywhere. <laughs> How do you see or experience sexism or misogyny on a daily basis? Uh, in the art world. Both of us are artists, and we see it a lot in the art world, and the way that um, the work of men tend to be um, tends to be favored more by collectors and dealers. Uh, we've come a long way, but we have a long way to go. Uh, there's uh, still uh, wage inequity in this country. Uh, there's still uh, violence, obviously, which is. Uh, which is uh, focused on women and on girls. Um, we have human trafficking, which inordinately affects um, women. Mostly male students, my students, who don't like taking direction from me because I'm a woman. Not all men are like that, but there are some men who just don't like being, my experience, my take on is they don't like being told how to do something or what to do by, by a woman. Um, and I think the second thing is, is I'm also lesbian. I've also always been lesbian. I think, you know, my look is not particularly uh, traditional yeah. woman look. And so I think uh, people respond, sometimes people respond negatively to that. That can be men and women who don't feel like I'm conforming enough sometimes. I don't know, I think we're surrounded by sexism and misogyny. I think that there are all kinds of double standards in our culture and our media for how men and women are treated. Um, uh, I, I, in my field in the entertainment industry, there are lots of cases where uh, men and women are represented differently on screen, and there are many cases where uh, uh, my partner, who is female, and I work together, and we're dealing with uh, clients or somebody has a question, often people will automatically turn to me and ask me what the answer to the question is, even though she is likely to be the one who knows the answer. How has the treatment of women changed since you were you? It has changed um, in a good way, uh, but it's still, there's a lot to work on it. There's a lot, I think, uh, we're going back to education, you know, teaching uh, the uh, the way that it should be treated and the way that a woman can't, they, they don't supposed to be abused just because they're women. Uh, we still can see it on the news around the world, especially Middle East, uh, how women are treated and it's, it's unbelievable. It's improved a lot, you know. Um, I was raised mostly by my mother, you know, I come from a Mexican-American background, so she was always around. My dad was working a lot, so I um, grew up with a, a lot of respect for women, so yeah, they're very important in the community, yeah. Well, I still think that we live in a time, when, like I just said, like men get paid like 20% more than females or something like that. I don't know the exact statistic, but I do know that that's still true. Um, I do think that we still live in a world where a male is considered more dominant than a female. Do you think a woman's race or nationality affects the way she is treated as a woman? Well, <clears throat> nationality, you're talking about where someone was born and what country they are affiliated with. And there are certainly uh, countries in this world which are more devastatingly sexist and misogynist than other countries and this depends upon the cultural orientation of the country and the religious orientation of the country and and uh, what kind of legacy uh, women have and women are are struggling all over this world but they are struggling in certain places 
uh, certainly more than they are struggling in other places. Uh, yes, definitely. So it's a lot easier for white women. Like often like whiteness is associated with like increased authority um, or like power in places like work, like work or even just like, you know, on the street, like as a white woman, I don't really have to worry about like the police stopping me or like, you know, searching me or like thinking I'm like, you know, selling drugs or something like that. But um, like for women of color, um, especially like in Los Angeles, there's like much higher rates of like dropout for girls in school, like in high school or um, like in workplaces. A lot of the times, like based on your race or your nationality, you like don't have access to certain jobs. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Sure. From both within your own community and then outside um, your community. Um, for example, uh, I'm Mexican-American. My family was just baffled by me and um, frustrated by me. And, um, you know, wanted me to be a very different person than I ended up being. I think outside of my community, a lot of people perceive me as like European, like Italian or something, and so they just they think a little odd because of that, maybe. <laughs> um, my former partner was uh, still is black. We're not together anymore, but she's black, and her experience as a black woman was very different from my experience. Um, for example, she would say that a lot of times uh, people would overly sexualize her or would uh, fetishize her being angry. She's an angry black woman. Um, so yeah, bringing different stereotypes and expectations and judgments based on race and perceived race, perceived ethnicity. Yeah, definitely. How would you respond to a family member coming out as LGBTQ? I think that anyone can be whatever they want to be. And it's not my decision, it's not my life, it's not... I feel like as long as somebody is happy, then that's all that matters to me. Oh, I, I love them and, you know, have no... Uh, you know, I guess I, I would have uh, compassion for uh, any difficulties they might encounter and uh, want to protect people from the way when you have kids you want to you know if I had a child who was gay you want to protect your kids in every way from harm or or um, you know um, people who would do them harm how do you think women feel when they are experiencing sexism or if you have experienced it what did you feel it's uh, irritation and a frustration. Sometimes it can be infuriating. You know, and uh, if I'm in a situation where I have felt very powerless, it can really make me very, very angry. Well, I have no idea because I'm not a woman and I haven't uh, experienced what a woman has experienced. I know that uh, my mother is uh, an extraordinary person and she is a pioneer in her profession and she showed me at a very young age what a woman was capable of achieving uh, not only domestically but also professionally and I see uh, three young women who are in front of me right now one of them's holding a piece of paper the other one's holding a camera and the other one's holding a microphone and that's the future and uh, I'll be following you I'm